Hello everyone, um, I've got this uh, TOG article summarised. It's uh, titled as Diagnosis and Management of Tuberculosis in Pregnancy. If you like this video then don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. So the rate of TB in the UK in 2008 was 14.1 per 100,000 population, while the rate in London was 44.3 per 100,000. In the UK, the national incidence of TB diagnosed in pregnancy was estimated at 4.2 per 100,000 maternities in, the, in, in 2005 and 2006. Um, the confidential inquiry into maternal and child health um, revealed that there were three indirect maternal deaths due to TB. The rates of TB in UK um, born population have remained stable. UK is one of the highest, um, has got highest incidence rates of TB in Western Europe. This largely it affects ethnic minorities, non-UK born Black, African and Indian, Pakistani, Bangladeshi um, ethnic groups, homeless and, and problem with um, drug users. Um, the highest rates are marginalised communities, higher rates of HIV, co-infection and extra pulmonary disease. Tuberculosis in pregnancy is now exclusively in ethnic minority and those born outside the UK. Ethnic minor minority born in the UK with links to endemic countries are also at increased risk. TB is caused by a mycobacterium tuberculosis complex. The several species, including mycobacterium tuberculosis, mycobacterium africanum, mycobacterium bovis, mycobacterium capri, mycobacterium microti, mycobacterium canetti, and mycobacterium um, pinnipedi. So mycobacterium tuberculosis was identified in 99% of the cultures um, with, in which the cases were confirmed, mycoafricum in, in 0.5% and mycobacterium bovis in 0.4% of the cultures. Information on species identification is collected by the UK Mycobacterial Surveillance Network and enable improved public health interventions. Clinical diagnosis is only possible in presence of active disease. However, one half to two thirds of pregnant patients with TB are asymptomatic, possibly due to latent infection. Constitutional symptoms like malaise, weight loss, loss of appetite, general and unusual tightness, um, persistent fever, night sweats come on gradually over a period of weeks or months. The UK data for extra pulmonary TB in pregnancy is as common as pulmonary disease. History of recent contact with persons with TB or presence of any other risk factors should raise a suspicion of TB. So effects of TB on the pregnancy, so pulmonary TB increases uh, obstetric morbidity, preeclampsia or, or acute respiratory failure and preterm labour. Extra pulmonary TB, so no direct effect on pregnancy, preeclampsia, or mortal delivery, but maternal morbidity uh, in the form of recurrent admission rates and disability is increased. Increased mortality in case of TB of central nervous system and other complications. The perinatal outcome depends on, uh, on depends on TB's pulmonary or extra pulmonary, and also whether it is diagnosed late in pregnancy. In a study of Indian women with pulmonary disease. Um, treated for seven to nine months in pregnancy, perinatal mortality was six times higher than in the control group. The incidence of prematurity, small for gestation age and low birth weight is doubled. The rate of adverse effects are higher when TB is diagnosed in the third trimester or the disease was in advanced stage or the woman was non-compliant with treatment. Substantial increase in neonatal mortality uh, mainly result of late diagnosis and treatment. So extra pulmonary disease, tuberculosis, lymphadenitis does not appear to have any significant effect on perinatal outcome. Extra pulmonary sites such as spine, abdomen and CNS was associated with increased rate, rates of fetal growth restriction and low APGAR scores. So congenital TB is rare 
um, infected infants present in second or third week of life with hepatosplenomegaly, respiratory distress, fever, low weight gain, irritability and poor feeding. Cantwell's diagnostic criteria for congenital TB are presence of TB lesions in infant and one of the following um, one of the following, so lesions in first week of life, a primary hepatic complex or um, caseating uh, granuloma, documented tuberculosis infection of the placenta or endometrium and or ex exclusion of the possibility of postnatal transmission by a thorough investigation of contact. Aims of treatment is to achieve cure without relapse, um, prevent progression of the disease or occurrence of complications, stop transmission to other individuals, healthcare professionals or newborns and prevent emergence of drug resistance. Pregnant women with TB um, should have a multidisciplinary team looking after them, so including a bacteriologist, chest physician, specialist TB nurse and obstetrician. Treatment initiated and monitored um, by chest physicians and specialist TB nurses. Hospitalization in extremely ill patient and smear positive, highly infectious and multi-drug resistant TB cases. Any hospital admission with suspected or, or diagnosed TB should prompt advice from hospital infection control department to prevent um, infectious uh, patients becoming into contact with others. So chemotherapy, so treatment um, disease status that is latent or active TB or whether there is drug resistance divided into initial um, intensive phase to kill actively growing and semi-dormant bacilli followed by a continuation phase which eliminates most of um, the residual bacilli and reduces features and relapses. Active TB is, is treated with isoniazid, rifampicin and ethambutol. That's the first line anti-tuberculosis drugs. During pregnancy, perinazamide for the first two months can be considered. It's, con it's considered that the use of at least two but usually three or more drugs will prevent the increasing incidence of single drug resistant TB and multi-drug resistant TB. In follow-up, women should be seen regularly to identify improvement and ensure their conversion from being infectious to non-infectious. A worsening chest radiograph on treatment or no improvement in symptoms should prompt exclusion of other differential diagnoses and multi-drug resistant TB. Follow-up after three months is necessary as relapse can occur within this time. Multi-drug resistance uh, should be followed up for at least one year after treatment has been completed. Latent TB and the role of chemoprophylaxis. Latent TB infection, especially in pregnant women, is controversial. Some prefer to delay treatment until after delivery because pregnancy itself does not increase the risk of progression of disease. And two stud studies suggest that women in pregnancy and the early postpartum period may be vulnerable to isoniazid hepatotoxicity. Infection control in late pregnancy and the puerperium. So pulmonary TB is potentially infectious. In DEX cases, sputum that smear positive for bacilli on microscopy, these women can be uh, rendered non-infectious by two weeks of treatment, which include rifampicin and isoniazid. If admitted to hospital, the decision about isolation depends on the initial assessment of infectivity, the possibility of multi-drug resistance, and the immune status of the individual. Women with suspected or confirmed multi-drug resistant TB should be admitted to a negative pressure ventilation room. Control of infection in healthcare settings is responsibility of um, infection control team. When admi admitted to the hospital, responsibility um, of care should be um, shared by the multidisciplinary team and in no case should treatment be delayed because of infection control issues. Tuberculosis is a notifiable disease and the clinician in charge of the patient is responsible for notification to the consultant in communicable disease control. If the woman is later found to be negative, they can be denotified. If TB is diagnosed postnatally, mother's, mother's sputum positive for acid uh, fast bacilli within two weeks following delivery, there's a potential risk of transmission of disease to the newborn. Infants with mother less than two weeks of treatment and sputum positive um, should have prophylactic isoniazid and pyridoxine um, and have a tubercle tuberculin test at six to 12 weeks. If negative, then BCG uh, vaccination can be given and chemoprophylaxis stopped. If tuberculin positive, then extended treatment for a total of six months. If B for BCG vaccine is not recommended for babies of mothers who are HIV positive until they have been shown 
to be HIV negative. Contact tracing and screening close family members or other individuals who have had close contact and, is, and, and also by history and examination, tubercle testing and chest x-ray. Contacts who are ill or should be thoroughly investigated for TB. Added contacts if the tubercle test is positive and immunocompromised or HIV infection positive have not had a BCG, then chemoprophylaxis with isoniazid is given. In children with positive tubercle test, is, it, it is suggestive of infection and treatment is given. A negative tubercle test is, is repeated in six weeks and if still negative, then BCG can be given. If it turns positive, it suggests active infection and this needs treatment. So breastfeeding is the healthiest way to feed a baby. Antitubercles drug, drugs cross into the breast milk, but amounts are too small to produce toxicity. Isoniazid also um, take uh, with isoniazid also take pyridoxine supplementation. No reports of any adverse effects among infants of nursing mothers receiving anti-TB drugs. Breastfeeding mothers who are acutely ill with TB, breastfeeding may have to be interrupted, and breast milk may need to be expressed to prevent mastitis. Role of BCG vaccine. So a BCG vaccine is a live attenuated strain of the bacillus derived from the mycobacterium bovis. No harmful effects on fetus from BCG during pregnancy, but live attenuated vaccines are avoided in pregnancy, particularly in the first trimester and delayed after um, delivery. Breastfeeding is not contraindication to BCG. Um, BCG is given to all neonates and infants living in an area with an annual TB incidence of 40 per 100,000 or with a parent or grandparent from a country where the incidence is 40 per 100,000 or family history of TB in previous five years. It's effective in preventing severe disease in infants and young children. BCG is not recommended for babies of mothers who are HIV positive until they have been shown to be HIV negative or if, if a member of the household has suspected or active TB. Multi-drug resistant TB in pregnancy incidence um, in the UK remains low, but associated with high mortality rate in the general population. Management should be individualized. Multi-drug resistant TB develops if there is non-compliance with treatment initially. It must be treated uh, with a second line antitubercles drug for a period of two years. So um, this is a take. So pulmonary TB symptoms, uh, it can be asymptomatic, persistent cough, um, the most common symptom, initially dry and non-productive, but may later become productive. Um, breathlessness, uh, a late feature, chest pain, um, localized bees, um, signs suggestive of pleural disease, pleural effusion or lung collapse. Pathogenesis is latent infection. Um, so in for, for, you know, for being asymptomatic, um, enlargement of the mediastinal nodes, which press on the bronchus or inflammation of the air, of the airways, it becomes productive with inflammatory exudates and or discharging granulomatous lesions. Um, so that's that's why they get cough. Breathlessness because of destruction of substantial lung tissue or significant pleural effusion. Chest pain because of pleuritic if peripheral granulomatous lesions are present. Uh, localized fees collapse of the distal lung um, caused by hyalur lymph node or bronchial narrowing secondary to compression by lymph nodes. So extrapulmonary TB, um, so sites can be central nervous system, it can be lymph nodes, bones and joints, gastrointestinal system, or other sites like gen genitourinary system, skin, pericarditis, TB, um, etc. So investigations, um, tubercle and skin testing, chest x-ray, other imaging like CT, MRI, the spine, abdomen, brain, um, smear and or culture sensitivity, interferon gamma release assays. Risk factors for TB, close contact with infectious cases, living in tra or travel or receiving visitors from places where TB is still very common, um, living in ethnic minority communities, um, having an immune system weakened by HIV infection or other medical problems, being very young or elderly as their immune system are less robust, chronic uh, poor health and nutrition because of lifestyle problems such as 
um, homelessness, drug abuse or alcoholism, being a, a migrant worker or the family or their family, living in poor or crowded uh, housing conditions, including living in hostels. Uh, tuberculosis treatment, so you've got standard uh, regime for active disease, isoniazid 300 milligrams once daily, plus rifampicin 600 milligrams once daily for six months, plus pyridoxine 10 milligrams daily to reduce the risk of isoniazid induced neuropathy. Liver function tests should be performed at least monthly. Ethanbutol is a first line drug for the treatment of TB during pregnancy in combination with isoniazid and rifampicin. Pyrazenamide um, can be added for the first two months in those cases where resistance of the of the other first line drugs is suspected or documented. Longer regimes, the same drugs, but for nine months in cases of bone TB and 12 months in cases of central nervous system TB. Multi-drug resistant organ organisms, so primary um, seen in uh, immigrants to UK and secondary develops due to non-compliance with initial treatment. It's also a problem with HIV infected patients with TB treatment with secondary second line drugs to which the um, sputum culture is sensitive should be used. Um, ethanamide and capri, caprimycin and um, cyclosirine and chlorithromycin, azithromycin, suprafluxacin, um, olofluxacin, um, canamycin and emicacin. Duration of therapy should be two years in HIV positive uh, women greater than 12 months after negative cultures. So drugs that are used for anti-tuberculosis drugs, so you've got your um, isoniazid, rifampicin, ethanbutyl, perizanamide, uh, streptomycin and canamycin. And it um, talks about the dosage, adverse effects and effects on fetus. So this is a flow chart for management of TB in pregnancy. So um, if they have a Mantos test negative, then and BCG scar is present and asymptomatic, no action required. If B, if Mantos test is negative, um, but symptomatic uh, with a negative Mantos test, um, then they should have investigations, uh, which which they should also have if they are Mantos test positive. So investigations for chest X-ray, smear, culture, um, other imaging modalities, CT, MRI. If negative, then no action required if positive, then initial treatment with three to four drugs, um, monitor for uh, non-compliance and infection control. Thank you so much. That's a summary of this talk article. I hope you'll find this useful and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And also leave a comment if there's any other useful content that you'd like to watch uh, to help with your upcoming MRCOG exams. Good luck revising.